Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an interesting equation. We have e to the power x on one side and square root of ax on the other side. So we're going to be solving this equation, which is non-standard, for several different values of a. So a is a parameter. As a changes, the solutions obviously are going to change. I'm going to show you some special cases as well as the case where these two curves are tangent. All right, so let's go ahead and do the following. f of x, let's go ahead and define f of x as e to the power x, and g of x as square root of ax. Obviously, we also want to know the value of a for which these two curves are tangent. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with that one. If these two curves are tangent at, let's say, tangent at x equals r, then this implies the following. So you're, you're, talk, you're talking about two curves. The points don't matter here just for you know, demonstration purposes. If two curves are tangent, basically, what's going to happen is that they're going to take the same y value at that point. So if this is r, this is f of r, but at the same time, it's g of r. So we can safely say that f of r is going to be the same as g of r. Let's go ahead and uh, plug it in and see what happens. If you replace uh, x with r, you get e to the power r. And in the other function, you get square root of ar. So we get one equation, which is not super helpful. E is a constant, but there are two variables, a and r. So we do need another equation. But let's go ahead and save this equation for now. Now, the, if the two curves are tangent, obviously, not only they're going to have the same value, but they will also have a common tangent, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Because I want to show you the special case scenario first. So, we talked about this equation, e to the power x equals square root of ax. And here we have the spe special scenario where a equals 1. Obviously, if a is equal to 1, you get e to the power x equals square root of x. But unfortunately, they do not intersect. So, there are no solutions to this equation for a equals one. We're going to see that later on. Why we don't have, or you know, we're going to we're going to take a look at it later one more time. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and pick it up from here. We have e to the power r equals square root of a r. We have f of x equals e to the x, and g of x equals square root of x. Now they have the same value at x equals r, but they also have a common tangent, which means that they have the same tangent at that point or the slope of the tangent is the same. But how do you find the slope of the tangent? We need the first derivative, e to the x, replace x with r, and you get the slope of the derivative. So it's like kind of like m, slope of the tangent, sorry, m sub t. For g, the derivative is, how do you differentiate square root of a function? Uh, you differentiate the inside, which is a, and then just divide by two times the same function. Just a rule that comes from chain rule, and if you replace x with r, g prime at r is going to be a over 2 times the square root of a r. That's also the slope of the tangent, but these two are the same. Therefore, f prime of r equals g prime of r. And this implies e to the r equals a over 2 times square root of a r. So we have two equations now. This is one of them, and this is the other one. So let's go ahead and put those together. e to the r equals square root of a r. Since they are both equal to e to the r, we can basically set these two equal to each other. So that gives us a over 2 times the square root of a r equals square root of a r. Cross multiply, you get a equals 2 a r. Let's put everything on the same side and factor out a. We get a equals 0 or r equals 1. Now what happens if a is equal to 0? If a is equal to 0, you get something like this, which is kind of weird, right? You get e to the x equals 0. But obviously, this has no solutions because it doesn't. e to the power x can never be 0 unless x is approaching negative infinity. Okay, so you, we have to look at the other thing, r equals 1 half. And we were looking for the a value, but first we found the r value. So r equals 1 half makes these two curves tangent. And we're going to look at the graph, obviously. But how do you find the a value from here, right? Well, we do know that we have an equation, right? e to the r 
equals square root of a r. And we know that a is equal to 1 half, so let's go ahead and replace a with 1 half. If you do that, e to the r becomes square root of a times 1 half, or um, actually we're supposed to, okay, I messed up, sorry. Replace um, r with 1 half, so that's going to be e to the power 1 half equals square root of a times 1 half, which is half of a. Great. e to the power 1 half is the same thing as square root of e, so we got square roots on both sides. We can go ahead and square both sides. And this gives us a over 2 equals e. Remember, e is Euler's number, which is about 2.7, right? Okay, I, I can't remember the hundredth digit, but I know, at least I know the tenths. So from here, if you multiply both sides by 2 or cross multiply, you get a equals 2e. Now, whatever the value of e is, you're going to double that, and that's going to give you the a value. So our point was to find the a value for which these two functions are tangents. What happens at other values of a? For example, we notice that a equals 0 gives us no solutions. Does a have to be positive? Can a be negative? So here's the problem. If you have the function square root of ax, if a is negative, then your x values must also be negative because then you're not going to have a valid uh, radical function. Okay? So here's what happens. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what the graph looks like and we're going to wrap it up. So we looked at the particular value where they don't intersect here. They do intersect, but they are also tangent. So for a equals 2e, the curves are tangent. What happens at other points? For example, if a is between 0 and 2e, then the curves do not intersect, do not intersect, therefore there are no solutions. No intersection means no solutions. Make sense? Okay, so, and remember, for a equals 1, we said that there are no solutions because you get y equals e to the x and y equals square root of x, and unfortunately these two graphs do not intersect. Obviously there are infinitely many values of a for which there are no solutions. That's why A is a parameter. As you change the values of A, you're going to be getting different sets of solutions. Obviously, no solution is also considered a solution. Okay, great. So what about the other values? For example, can we get more than one solution? We got no solution. We got one solution where they are tangent. Ab absolutely. First of all, e to the x is, notice that e to the x is going to be um, fixed. But square root of ax is going to vary. And you can definitely graph this in Desmos, set um, you know, a slider for a, and as you change the a values, you're going to notice that this graph is actually going to move this way or that way. And notice what happens as it moves kind of up in an upward uh, mo movement, then you're going to get two intersection points. So let me go ahead and give you that as well. For a values that are greater than 2e, you're going to get two intersection points or two solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.